talk about giants let's talk about giants so like the the thing man brian romley is amazing that dude is that dude's connected to all kinds of stuff and i've been trying to get him on the podcast forever he, he's like he writes his own i don't i found i found him because of ttsa back in the day there was pictures of him and delong at the white house all right and i don't, I don't think those pictures are out there anymore they were on twitter they're gone i can't find them there might be somewhere out there but it's him him romley brian romley and tom delong standing in front of the damn white house and I'm like, okay, what's going on? Come to find out, I do some digging. Brian Romley's um, computer, like genius. This guy's been a genius forever, right? All these MITs, like everywhere. He's he's written his own algorithms to do like a voice assistant thing that's completely um, not connected to the internet at all. So it's like this intelligence, extended intelligence thing that he has that's amazing, right? That's like, you know, he basically talks to it and, you know, that connects to the internet and does stuff and he's got firewalls it's just, it's just i can't even explain it right okay but the but the dude knows um can read sumerian cuneiform and i think he had his part in that whole app that never came about from ttsa where they were trying to like decode text and you know like have that huge database i think it was the adam i don't know if it was adam or i can't remember whatever the acronyms they had for it i have another friend who has a friend who's working on cuneiform like reading stuff so maybe they were connected or maybe there's separate programs going on, but anyway, go on. No. Yeah, no. So, so anyways, he, um, he was getting into that, but he's the guy who posted the thing. Uh, like he's, he's just like, the guy's kind of amazing. I don't know if, how he knows the future, if he does, if he just, whatever he uses data points, but like the stuff he talks about and perfect example, I was like, ah, I started looking into him at the beginning of the around the middle of pandemic. Right. So last year, middle of last year, and he's like, Hey, you should probably check out this domino stock. Don't, don't say I didn't tell you whatever. I'm like, ah, Where's my financial advisor? He's like, nah, nah, dude, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mess with that. It, it went from like 50 bucks to like 350. And, and I was like, holy crap, I screwed that one up. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, it, But, but Romley is like huge on, on Bitcoin and bit, you know, mining, all of that stuff. So he posted the thing and he does some really cool far out stuff too, along UFOs and the consciousness and all this stuff. And he posted that video of the, um, Iranian, Redhead. Yeah, that was in stasis, right? That was just laying there. And he basically was just like, I'm not saying anything. It was 2008. Here it is. It just speaks for itself. So, and then I just sent me down a rabbit hole and I was like, crap. And then that's when you and I were like, we're giants. Right. On Twitter, I was like, oh, yeah. So I first saw those same, I the, the video I saw um, of those, there was, I believe, like, there was more than just those two. There was like six of them. And some of them looked dead. And then mm -hmm. a couple of them, like that one with the, like the beautiful flowing hair looks like, like Greek currently God alive. Thing. Yeah, like yeah, the Greek yeah. God, like he has like head hair on his beard. Yeah. Um, so I actually saw this like when I was living in New York City and I was, this was probably either 2010 or 2011 when I first saw it. And my roommate called me and, and she was like, Nikki, come look at this. And it was on YouTube. And at that point I wasn't into YouTube. I didn't have like an, like if I watched a YouTube video, it would be here and there. And I didn't even sign into my account. I didn't like people's things. I didn't subscribe. It was a different thing. YouTube right, wasn't right. what it is now. Right. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, what is this shit? Like, this is somebody in a Halloween <laughs> costume. Like, what are you talking? Like, what is this? And yeah. she's like, yeah, no, but look, she's, she was Russian. My roommate was Russian. Ah, okay. And, for all my friends in New York, like my, my top five best friends were all, and a lot of them live in Moscow now, but they were all Russian. And gotcha. like, she was like, I guess she had kind of, it, it was on a Russian news site. That's, ah. that's where this thing was. And she was showing me this and she was like, no, like, and she was reading me what it said in Russian. And she was like, look, they're saying that there's like all these giants who are like, some of them are in these uh, crystal chambers and that they're, uh, they're still alive. Wow. And they can't figure out how to wake them up. And I was just like, where? And I, and, and I was like, and she didn't tell me Afghanistan. She's like, I don't know, somewhere in the middle East somewhere, or maybe it's in Georgia. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking like, Oh, that's interesting. And I thought, and I, and I kind of just put it in the back of my head, but I didn't really care about it. And then that same video started surfacing whenever Corey good was big. Yeah. I think Corey, <laughs> like, when was that? That was like, 2015 uh, maybe or 2016 maybe. or something yeah when he New had that when he yeah. when he was on cosmic disclosure before mm, people mm. started like hating on all that yeah um there there was um 
he he pulled out the same videos of the stasis oh. trance, even the ones that your friend just posted. Yeah. And he was saying that um, they're all over the globe and that they're planted here and that they're starting to wake up because of the consciousness thing right now. But then they woke up to they didn't realize that it's kind of like a Rip Van, Van Wrinkle thing. They didn't realize they were going to open like wake up to demonic control. And there's they were apparently they're being um, held hostage by global elite. Like that's that's his that's his story, apparently. Right, so, right. So then I I just sort of like was like, oh, he just stole those Russian people's Halloween costume like thing or whatever. <laughs> and then I see it again, but the more okay. So the stasis thing is one element of this, but then the other thing is the giants. And particularly what's interesting to me about mythology of giants is that a lot of times they're redheaded. Mm -hmm. six fingered mm -hmm. and i have heard blue skinned sometimes right. tinged yeah like a blue tinge of skin yeah, yeah that was the thing right and, and that's i mean and the newest one i would say newest one but is it, i think it's 2002 afghanistan was the one that, that i've heard stories from the guys special ops guys right yep there's a lot of um there's like linda moulton howe has done some stuff on that she talked to some of the whistleblowers and then yeah. there's a lot of you can look that up like um, some guy made a really good YouTube video about it. They kind of had like, they had like some animations or like, drawings. you know, like drawings of it. Yeah. Where basically this thing comes out of a cave and spear chucks a spear at a special forces guy right through him, press plate, everything, you know, eight foot long spear. And then they just light up right now. They special, but they, but they go cause they're investigating another platoon or something that just is gone. And as they're walking up, there's just parts all over the place and clothing and guns and shit. And they're like, what happened here? And then. There's a redheaded giant in a cave that comes out and attacks them, right? And it takes all of them to bring this thing down. And they had to get like a Chinook or something to haul it out. Yeah. And apparently, so yeah, they, they kill the giant and then they mm -hmm. take him to uh, Ohio. And there you go. Where and, I'm at. Uh, <laughs> and, then, and then they say that, um, you know, like they're all like told that they can't talk about it or whatever. This was 20 years ago, though, almost like or 19 yeah. years ago. So right. that I think that's kind of interesting that... Um, at the fun time, I was like, why would you kill something like that? Why would you just try to capture it? But I, if it, if it killed your men, then yeah, like, why wouldn't you? Right. But and if it's like, chucking eight foot long spears that go right through a man and like, like boom, what, yeah, what are you exactly. going to do? I mean, so, you just pick you up like little toys and, you know. And so that one is supposedly like 12 to 15 feet is I, I weighed a thousand pounds. Like they said it weighed a thousand pounds. And they, yeah, because they had to get that helicopter with the two rotors, like the Chinook thing to pick it up. They couldn't right. just like get a Humvee, you know, it was like, this isn't happening. Supposedly six fingers and redheaded. Yeah, and, beard. And then like some, some accounts say it had a bluish tinge. Mm -hmm. Some didn't. Okay. So that is why. And I don't know if the stasis giants have anything to do with those giants or not, but. I did have you did I ever tell you about or did you ever look into my Atlantis portal story? Yes, you told me about it, I think. About the um well, we talked about portals a lot. I'm trying to remember the Atlantis part of it. I mean, okay, I'll just go go for it again. Okay, gonna... so I in 2018, I no, or maybe it was like yeah, it was 2019. I met this like shaman guy from Colombia mm -hmm. and at, at this festival, and he was he was giving a talk to everybody about um, these Atlanteans that he had met in this portal in Colombia in the Amazon forest. Okay. And I was like, well, I don't, that's, that's interesting. <laughs> I'm going to go to that talk. Right. So I went down, he doesn't speak English. He only speaks oh. Spanish. And uh, my, my friend's the translator. Okay. And cool. my friend was translating for him. And I, it's, so anyway, my friend invited me to this festival because he had this friend that he, this older gentleman that he wanted to help. He was also Colombian and he wanted to help him do the same. Gotcha. So I was like, okay. Um, so I, I, I go and I got to spend like three days with this Sarata guy, this, this shaman dude. Mm -hmm. And he has this fantastical story about how these, there's this portal area in Colombia, which I ended up going to. That's where I was when coronavirus hit. Um, wow. and that's where I saw my unicorn. That was like, oh, oh, okay. All right. I remember that. Okay. okay. So, that, yeah, 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 so yeah. that's that place I was. So the re what took me there was this story. The story was that, um, okay, I'll try to make this as concise as I can. But basically, Sarata had been going to this place in his 30s. And then um, 
this monk or something came, said that he was called to, to come to the portal, but that Sarata had to take him to the exact place. It was called Manoa is the name of this, this uh, like mountain, right? Says Manoa, yeah, yeah. So he goes to, and it's kind of like a lot of it has a lot of the El Dorado, City of Gold, um, legendary stuff with it. Anyway, so Sarata like t- takes the monk there and he has like a team of nine people that are going on this journey. They hear some pan whistling, some or some pan flutes and stuff. And like there was all these um, uh, creatures going in and out of trees and they kind of get distracted by all this stuff that's going on. And the monk walks behind this like stone or tree or something and disappears. Then uh, they can't find him. He's missing. He's gone. So they go back to the camp. And then that morning, Sarata, he's like, I can't just leave a person that I brought out here. I can't just like, I can't just go back home and just leave this guy. Like I have right, to. Leave right. him. So he's like, all right, you guys, I'm going to go look for him again alone. Like I'll be back. So he decides to follow the guy's exact steps. So he goes behind this tree or this rock. And he says that there's these, how he describes it is he's, animatronic like guards they're like they're robot guards and he was like okay this is weird and he says this 12 foot blue woman walks out of the doors and she's she's like her skin is blue and she's 12 feet tall and she has six fingers and this this dude this little spanish dude has no idea about this afghanistan story or any of these other giant stories. He's, he's not he's, on the internet. He doesn't, this shit up. he doesn't own a smartphone. y'all. Like, <laughs> right, he, right, like right. he doesn't have the internet access. Like you can't right. find him if you want to. Right, um, right. And anyway, he was like, he's like, yeah. So she, she says her name is uh, Consuela. And she, she says that the monk has been invited and the monk is going to be staying. He's not coming back. Like he's going to stay with him. And Sarata's like, well, I can I have him tell me that because I I would feel much better if I could see him and he could tell me that and I could feel like I can go away like in peace and she's like okay like so she invites him into and she said it's an Atlantis breakaway um, portal like she said and so he comes in to the city and it's like he says as soon as he gets to the doors it's like every he's like the whole nature is like there's like an illusion that's gone and he can see like this whole amazing like hyper futuristic beautiful city thing and they're in these like flying vessels which kind of sound a little bit like ufos the way like she he talks about it and she takes him around and she gives him a tour of the city for like four hours and she explains to him it's like wakanda um, yeah exactly exactly (laughs) it's like wakanda and she explains to him that there are that they're atlanteans but that also mu people exist And that, um, you know, that, that they didn't all, it, well, and she told him this crazy thing about how um, what really happened is that the um, Lumerians and the Atlanteans had a, have a, had a war and uh-huh. they destroyed the earth and that there's, but there's still pockets of people that exist and they, they hide themselves from the fifth race of man and that we're the fifth, fifth race of man. And uh, anyway, so um I I'm I'm I was like I thought it was a cool enough story to like yeah. do anything I'll go to Colombia okay let's yeah. check out I thought it was I didn't think I was gonna see a giant and I didn't but mm. I did see a unicorn so something kind of weird is going on in that area that was a portal so you guys can call me crazy I don't really care I'm just telling you what I know I'm saying there's something up no. with the giants dude there, there's got to be because when you think back historically I mean we go through all these. The 1800s newspapers, right, all through America. And a lot of it happened in Ohio where I'm at. You know, they have these burial mounds, you know, and they'll dig them up. And it's like, oh, here's an eight foot. T- the guy was eight foot tall. The guy was nine foot tall, 10 foot tall, you know, 12. The women were 10 foot tall, 12 foot tall. There's even a couple of photos, you know, guys standing up next to, right, you know, skeletons that are 12 feet tall. And there's a, you know, five foot nine, you know, maybe, you know, maybe six foot tall guy. And this thing is towering over him. And they go to the Smithsonian and they disappear. All the time, every single time. That's you know, that's um. I was listening to a um big Bigfoot podcast. I think it's called Blurry Creatures, and they were talking to these um a couple of native guys who were um from Ohio, and they talked about the um the 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 giant skeletons that are taken away from the mounds, and they kind of were you know postulating that they're just skeletons of Bigfoot, but mm. um you know I don't know. But anyway, the thing is is what I found interesting about that is the Smithsonian cover up. The Smithsonian stuff is really interesting. Like Chaco Canyon, for instance, like yeah. when you go, when you go there, um, 
it'll say like excavated by the Smithsonian Institute in like 19 or, or 1912. Right. And when you go to the museum there, supposedly there was millions or not millions, thousands. There, there's pottery shards just covering everything. It's like not that many people have been to Chaco Canyon. It's, you guys should all go there. It's like the American pyramids. It's like nice. the coolest thing ever. But anyway, um, they supposedly there was like full pots of jewelry and stuff. Like the, whoever was there just left overnight. And where they don't have the artifacts of Cho- Chaco Canyon <laughs> on display anywhere. So like I've been a- to the Native American Museum in Washington, D.C. They don't even have, and I've been, I've even like asked curators, I've been like, I've emailed them because yeah, I used to work at a museum. Like I have my master's in art history. Like I have no fear of the museum people. Right, and I right, like, right. will be like, Hey, you know, like where's the Chaco Canyon artifacts that, and they're in storage or this or that, or they just don't think it's like a big deal. And I'm like, okay, but it's a big deal to me. It's like a weird deal to me that you have this giant national park, a uh, little museum set up at the actual spot, but you don't have any pottery there <laughs> or you don't have any of the actual artifacts. Yeah. That, artifacts that came from right down there. From there. Like, yeah. Smithsonian is, they do some sketch stuff, y'all. They do. They do. And I have a friend that I reached out to as well. And I was like, you know, dude, what's up with this? Where are they? And he's like, well, you know, they're probably there. They're not on display. I mean, and I'm like, well, I can't go see him. And he's not, I think he's an anthropologist. He's like, no, but I, you know, since he's, you know, doctor, doctorate, whatever, right. He, he can go check it out. And I'm like, well, what's up with it? He's like, yeah, it's, you know, just. A lot of, he's like a lot of times they just called them giants because they were like six foot two <laughs> or whatever and I'm like eh, it's I don't I don't I don't buy it man I mean when people it's not like these people were dumb I mean obviously when you're taking photos next to a skeleton <laughs> and the thing's nine foot tall and it's in every newspaper all over the damn United States for like fifty years right and yeah. then it just and then it goes away like you know I've heard weird stories that they just grind them up you know, destroy them so that you can't have evidence, you know, things like that. But it's like, well, well then you think like, well, why, why would, well, why? Like, yeah. Yeah. Why? I mean, is it, is it go through that whole narrative where it doesn't fit in the mold of, of, you know, common. See, it's gotta know, be whole- bigger than that though, because it's like uh, Sardinia is um, supposedly Sardinia has a lot of giants or has a lot of legend of giants and they have, they have the ones that were, um, or they have legends of ones that were like 25 feet, like the, the big, big ones where like, um, they, you know, like they have teeth that are the size of, you know, bat skulls. Skulls or something. Yeah. Or human skulls. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. a lot of, it's interesting because a lot of folklore they have there is that starting in the early 1900s, the British museum people would come over and destroy all of them. And they had to literally, they don't allow Westerners or anybody who's not like of Sardinia to actually know about them or to find like if they find some on their land, if they're doing whatever, they don't tell uh, the outside world because they said that we destroy them. Wow. Wow. You know, and, and that's a thing, but then, uh, you know, I was, I was having this conversation with my wife. I was like, you know, I'm going to talk to Nikki about giants. She's like, what? <laughs> what? I'm like, yeah, we're going to talk about giants. It's going to be rad. But then when you think about it, I mean, you go right back to the Bible, everybody pushes the Bible and it's like, well, they were literally in the Bible. It says they were giants on the earth at that time. Yeah. And you know? then afterwards, and there's like Nephilim, Rephilim, or, or Rophilim. I mean, yeah, there's, there's, there's giants. I mean, David and Goliath. Goliath was a fucking giant, right? <laughs> like, yeah, that's true. Um, and these are not like these <laughs> right? are not just like NBA story. players. They're not just like tall dudes. Like some, I mean, that's not what we're talking about Someone's here. Like, like 10, I mean, 15, 20 feet tall. Yeah. So like, I just don't understand why, why that would be like throw our throw our worldview off. Like, who cares? I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. I mean, unless it, it, if it completely contradicts science, okay, I can see that. But I mean, maybe if it contradicts the Bible, which it doesn't, because they talk about the the, the giants, right? I mean, they, they talk about it. And, you know, other cultures all throughout history have talked about giants as well. It's not a big deal. I mean, they talked about interbreeding even in the Bible, right? And the, the Nephilim, and and you know, came into the daughters of man. I can't remember the exact quote, but you know, there you go, right? So they either got bred out or they got hunted and killed to extinction, you know, I mean, it seems like it. I mean, but maybe these, and then I'm thinking, well, maybe they were just assholes. Maybe they were really just these. Well, these okay. Giants. 
the asshole giants are um that's what the the love lock cave um legends in, in nevada like that's apparently um they didn't even die off that long ago apparently because um like maybe at the turn of the century or in the late 1800s the native americans killed them they like burned them alive in this cave and they said that they were cannibals and the reason they burned them alive is because they would come and steal native americans in the middle of the night and they would eat it they were red-headed giants who they said were stupid and uh -huh. they ate people and that's what the native <laughs> americans I, I, and it's it's what is it it's like i wrote it down it was like oh they're called the uh city cha like s-i-t-e-c-a-h like that's the name of those exact giants and then um they were buried in a bunch of guano bat poop and apparently yeah. they were found in 1911 which is a really weird year because that's also when um 1911 is when you know the first flight or th something mm -hmm. or and it's also like i don't know but that's and then they were destroyed apparently that's legend of those they destroyed like the miners destroyed uh uh the the love remains. Lock remains yeah okay so, like, yeah all right all right we're just gonna blow it up i mean i guess i mean but and when you think about all the, the burial mounds that are still all over. I mean, Ohio is full, but they're all over the place. But I mean, like a lot of them are sacred, right? So there was like a lot of sacred sites. So like, mm -hmm. is that because we don't want to dig them up to find more giants? Or is it because we don't want to desecrate them because of the land? You know, like, but we dig up everything. I mean, that's just what we do. It was yeah. another conversation. Right? We dig up everything. It doesn't matter. It's like, there's graves. Or we look at Egypt. Look at everywhere, right? I mean, right. just bones everywhere there's we just that's yeah, what we it's do like there's a statue of limitation within our human mind where it's like oh this thing is over like none of your ancestors are alive still so they we can you now are an artifact yeah yeah here's an art we're just gonna stitch you up in a museum somewhere yeah no totally i mean but i mean so like i wonder if that's another thing to do be like or the you know you don't want to disturb the dead and you know and if they tie it to the native americans which there's no fucking way that these things are tied i mean it's way pre um most Native American tribes are, are these things that you find, right? I mean, well, that's why I was like uh, in New Mexico, where I'm from. I like Los Lunas has it's called Los Lunas de la Quad stone, and it's like this SUV sized stone on the back of a volcano about 20 minutes south of uh, Albuquerque, mm -hmm. uh, southwest of Albuquerque. And um, you have to go up there, and it's this giant megalithic rock that has Hebrew writing on it. Whoa. and like my dad knew about it when he was in high school. He's wow. 70. So it's just like one of those things where it's been around, like people have known about it for a long time. The Native Americans there say that it's always been there. It was there before they got there. <laughs> and it's not even Hebrew that we can read. It's like some sort of predecessor language to Hebrew. And then some people say, oh, that's a fraud. It's a fake thing or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I'm from that area. Like, I don't, I think that that's not a fake thing. But right, whatever. right, yeah, um, they're they're everywhere. I mean, like, I don't know. I mean, like, what's the what is the is it? Are we scared? I mean, this is going to scare us. I mean, what if what if they're just a bunch of dumb redheaded giants that eat people? Well, yeah, but then there's also um, the two uh, how, like the Tuatha de Danon are mm. a legendary um, Irish. Mythic. Irish like myth or yeah. whatever and they were some of them were said to be giants as well and they were magical people or whatever and maybe there's some kind of something with that like maybe there's some magical stuff. I don't know maybe there are still alive like that portal guy says I don't know okay let's talk about the stasis aspect of this oh, this is weird yeah. to me the stasis aspect is huge. And when I started, when I saw this thing that Romley put up with a video that we're talking about that came from 2008 or whatever, right? I started digging into it a lot because John Luke and I, um, John Luke got, went down this whole thing with, um, oh God, the Russian optometrist. I can't remember his name, but he he, he did a giant book about um, Samadhi or Samadhi, right? So it's the, uh, are you familiar with that? It's basically. Yeah, it's basically like enlightenment or state or Right, you get into a state of enlightenment, but you also into a state you're in stasis where your body's there, but you've like ex you've left your body and you're in, in a different realm, right? But your body's still like a vessel that still needs to be like kept in the stasis. You can go, you're basically outside your body. You're doing, you know, you're on the etheric level, or you know, you're in consciousness, or you are consciousness, or whatever. But it's basically like a time capsule. Of your body, so you can come back. So supposedly, this Russian figured out that there's uh, Mount Kalesh. I don't know if it was Mount Kalesh or not or something, but there's a, um, a place where the Sumerians, the Lumerians 
and even humans are all in the state of samadhi, you know, samadhi. And uh -huh. basically they're meditating and they're outside of their bodies, but their bodies are there. Reminded me completely of this giant video that we're seeing that they're basically in a stasis, their bodies are there. Um, uh, Mesh, Ernest Meshlov, I think, uh, Ernest, Ernest Maldevich, I can't remember, I'll mess that whole thing up, I'll put it on the screen. <laughs> but anyway, Jean-Luc took me to this guy and read all these books. And he like searched his whole life and kind of figured it out. Um, and it was basically like you, you know, you went to the, the Banpo Lama, which is, you know, the other Banpo Tibetan um, Buddhism. And, you know, basically they're like, we could tell you where it's at, but you would never get there. You could never get to the place because the psychic energy of the area, I mean, like it would just, you would basically just overwhelm you and you would just like, uh, and you couldn't even get to where these bodies are. Supposedly there's monks that have dedicated their lives that are just like overseeing the people that are in Samadhi. They're just in the in this cave, in this mountain. And there's like, you know, a blue Lumerian or whatever. And there's an island, you know, seven foot, 10 foot tall, 12 foot tall. And these, these beings are just like there with their eyes rolled back in their heads and they're meditating and they're doing something on the psychic realm, you know, but that... It's like, well, shit. That well, I wonder they if do they do say there. Well, there was that mummy who was like 500 years old, and he still looked like he was alive. And they say that he's in, or that's how he died. He died with the, I uh, can't remember where that was. I think it was somewhere in Tibet. But I, it reminds me of. Um, I listen to Matt Belair sometimes, and he he studied with some Shaolin monks, and then he climbed Mount Everest or something like that. And he said on his way up to. Um, Everest he's like there's he's like the highest point that he went I don't think he went all the way up but he went like a little bit past base base camp he's like there's a temple across the way like on another uh mountain he's like he's like it was and like people live there or do something or something he's like you know the locals have never been there no one's been there but there's he's like there's amazing temple on the other opposite side he's like how do what's go what's going on there and it's just like don't ask like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you'll never make it over. Like, how did like, how yeah. do they even build that thing up there? You know, it. Um, yeah. Anyway, I I think that uh, the the mesmeric sage or that they're in some sort of other realm thing is really interesting to me because um, I I mean there could be all kinds of psychic implications on on control systems of people mm -hmm. could be do like we're controlling our reality from a mesmeric space and we don't even know right yeah yeah or keeping it together you know or, or keeping it together right yeah that could be you know that's kind of what they're thinking they're doing it for the benefit of mankind or whatever that's why they have to be kept in that state you know like whatever they're doing is propagating throughout you know earth or the universe or something but when you know and it kind of um i found i, I did a little bit of digging and i, I got found some russian sites did some translating and I found some additional photos. There's actually photos that were taken from the person whoever did the video at the time. And one of them is like grabbing this, grabbing the guy's boob. Um, <laughs> the one that with the curly hair, oh, like really? the yeah. hair. Yeah. He's grabbing it to sh one. yeah. The show that it's like basically like real you know, flesh. flesh. Yeah. And he's poking him in the belly and another one. And, and I think from what I was gathering, you know, it's basically Russian translated English. So you kind of put it together, but I was saying that he becoming more fleshy like and i know what you're talking about like i saw like a flash of one but the one looked like they're blue or dead you know like completely like right like one's eyes are like like diamonds and it's just like but they say that we did that to them by opening their because they're they had okay or at least the original video i watched the, that there was some that were encased like sleeping beauty in like mm -hmm. a there they weren't you couldn't they didn't had they hadn't pried it open or they hadn't figured out how to get it open yet and they were still in an actual casing like, they were looking yeah. they had the camera like looking through like it looked like a giant crystal it looks like they were inside a box like an inside a crystal mm -hmm. um not even like inside glass like i'm saying they looked like they were inside ice or something um and wow. you couldn't get real, right. real good picture of them. But those two that they have on that video that like was on your Twitter feed, um, that one they say is completely dead. The one with the iced out eyes. Or at least that's what. Right, right. And the other the one looks like he's just sleeping. Them. Kind of. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. And I can't find that old video. I've looked around. I, that, that's gone, right? I mean, I, don't, I haven't oh, seen Oh, yeah. I, I like. About. 
in preparation for this interview, I was like looking for it too. Cause I, cause the one I saw was like 30 minutes and I, nope. <laughs> <Do> <laughs> and like, so, and, and like I said, there was like more than, I mean, cause I'm going on 10 year old memory here at this right, point right. Uh, or 10 plus year old memory. So I can't tell you how many there were, but it was like a long thing. And my Russian roommate was like reading it to me. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. It was just, um, uh, what a shame though. <laughs> but I mean, it, it, the, you know, going back to the whole thing was like, that was part of the Russian thing too, is that they were being, you know, whisked away to some place where the people were, were studying them. You know, it was like, whatever they were at, it was just like, hush, hush, boom, get them somewhere. But like you said, well, these guys wake up and they're like, ah. And basically what it was saying in the thing that I read was that there were some kind of astrological clock that they were starting to come out of their stasis because of the Earth's entered a certain path in the universe that basically has woken them up, right? Like whatever the trajectory, you know, whatever the alignment is of the universe and whatever the energy is, is basically like entered a time where they need to come back and help humanity get through the next whatever, right? Like the next catastrophe or, you know, help humanity to come out. And that, that's why I kept bringing bells for me too, about the Samadhi, you know, right. things that we were talking about. It's like, well, they're just there, their bodies are there doing something else, but they're able to come back. And like, I think John Luke was saying that from the book, basically that they are time capsules with their DNA. So like that Lumerian is like, okay, so here's a one Lumerian. We have like the full DNA of Lumerian. We have like one LNTN, you know, we have one human. We have like basically time capsules of DNA of people, but their psychic energy can come back and they can revive and come back, you know? It's interesting. I'll try to find this article that a friend, a friend sent me something about how, um, some of the people working on AI at like Google Deep State have also discovered that um, also our cells have t are can could be considered time crystals. And I was like, I don't even know what that means. But they're like, no, like like he was like, there's some sort of time crystal about the actual like uh, physicality of a human. And I'm like, huh, okay. I, I don't know how to process that in my brain, but like, I know it just sort of like, I know it's something I need to dig further into. Oh yeah. Yeah. Ryan Bledsoe, um, in a podcast I listened to today was saying that our DNA is crystalline, that humans DNA is, is crystal based. I'm like, oh. well, a lot of people in the spiritual community say that we originally had 12 grand, 12 strands of DNA and that only we have two right now and that you can, you can like from a meditative state, like activate your crystalline DNA and they mm. talk about instead of envisioning like the double mm. helix, you envision like a 12 stranded, like um, toroidal filled, wow. like toroidal filled balls or beads instead of like, you know, and that you can actually visualize that into being. And I'm like, okay, cool. Can I do stuff? <laughs> like, could I like some telepathic with that? Or... Yeah. What, I you fly at that point? Yeah, I could fly, do, yeah. Do you, become 12, do you become a 12 foot tall blue Lemurian? Like, right. Basically, you become a Neo in the matrix. That's rad. I'm down. Yeah, yeah I am too. I mean, I don't know. Um, I, I also, um, the rip, like there, this is like, what do you think about the concept of, um, they kind of, whoever they are, um, they supersede little bits of things to us all the time. Like rip Van Winkle. Okay. Yeah, like he, yeah. Dutch American or story from the 1810s or something like he, he goes to sleep and, or he's actually, the, I just read that legend today. So he um, leaves his nagging wife. This is before the American Revolution. He lives somewhere in America. He goes and he hears some people playing a pipe or whatever. And he like hangs out with them for an afternoon. And then he comes back and he's, it's 20 years have passed in post-American war. And like King George isn't on the tavern anymore. It's like George Washington. And he, his wife's dead. All his friends have died in battle. His son's like older than him. And, you know, it's just, uh, it's just this whole, whole story that like, you know, the story, the ledge or the fairy tale of sleeping beauty kind of thing, like mm -hmm, these mm -hmm. and snow white, like they both kind of have like a little bit of, um, the, uh, stasis chamber thing. Like, yeah. well, it's, and, and like you just said, Wakanda, right? Like, yeah. do, are these things, are they like, are they like bread, breadcrumbs that they just supersede in the consciousness of humanity or? I think, I think so. I mean, I think it's probably both. I think it, it, 
it has to be right. It's either that or, you know, I don't think somebody's going to show up and go, Hey, you want to do a movie? We got a good thing for you. And so we're going <laughs> to, we're going to, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, there's probably some of that. I mean, I guess, um, you know, my dad's, you know, 81 and his theory was like, you know, at least for the past 60 years, they've been sprinkling little bits of truth and, you know, media and television and stuff like that of things that are going on. And, you know, I could see that for sure. But like, I think you're right. I think it's more of, you know, the collective unconsciousness or collective consciousness is just like, oh yeah, this is a thing. And, you know, why are all the fairy tales you tell kids sco- scary and weird, you know? Yeah, that's also true. You know, it's always these weird, weird tales, you know? And um, it's like, well, I, I think it has some type of deep rooted in, in, in our subconscious that are, that's like that, like you said, the Sleeping Beauty, the, you know, the, the everything, giants. I mean, Jack and the Beanstalk is fucking giant. <laughs> you <Right. know? laughs> it's another one, right? I mean, there's all, there's all these, these fables and things like that. So there's gotta be some truth to it. I mean, you know, but then you do have humans that are like eight foot nine, you know, foot tall and stuff like that. You know, you do, I mean, you have those, but. Andre you know, the not, giant, right? Like, yeah, whatever. right. And all these other people that are massive. So it's doable. I mean, they're out there, but maybe there's a different race. That's, that's what I was getting at is like, what if they would figure out they're human. They look like us anyway. Well, not in all cases. I mean, they have six fingers, right? Right. You know, these other things, blue skin or whatever. But what if that's a complete different race that you, I mean, back in the 1800s, I'm sure you could do this, but like now we can, you know, run the DNA on this thing and be like, Hey, this thing has 10 strands, right? Not, it's not too, where the hell did this come from? Was it a divergent species from, from us? Did it land here? Like, are these aliens? Like what the hell's going on? And maybe because they didn't know what the fuck was going on so long ago, they were just like, hush it up. We don't know what's going on. And this would freak everybody out if they knew your aliens, 12 foot tall aliens that are running around eating people. Well, th- th- um, my friend, Andrew, like in preparation, I asked last week on Twitter, I asked like, Hey, I'm going to talk about giants with like, what's up? Like, so my friend, Andrew, he um, sent me something um the book of Og, which is like something that they te- took out of um, who Og was a giant. They took it out of the Bible. Um, how do you find something fast from like four days ago on Twitter? (laughs) 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 Um, That's, this might be a second. Uh, Yeah. 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 But yeah. So there was like, I didn't know that a giant um, wrote a, uh, a book of the Bible. That's interesting. Yeah. uh, Apparently. uh, But what I thought was really interesting is he talks about how, from what I remember of this text, like it's only like a page long. So I was going to read it, but I'll just, I'll just go off in memory for now. But basically um, yeah. talks about the Nephilim and the, and the Raphaelim or whatever, but the, like, he basically says that they made, they made the great mistake and they got down to where they only had one female. So, um, Ooh. then, then they had to, um, mate with the, with the small selves, which would be us. And then, um, ah. yeah. And it's, it's really interesting because he's reading that book and he even talks about how circumcision is, uh, explained by I can't remember oh Nimrod apparently the, who was uh, also a giant Nimrod mm-hmm. apparently accidentally got injured on his genitalia uh, on his member and so like he got the first accidental circumcision and then they wanted to kill him but in order to identify him they knew that he had that injury so he made his entire tribe of people do or his entire group do that so that they couldn't tell which one he was and uh and that's how circumcision started. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> but that comes from that book <laughs> isn't that crazy it's like um, my dick's messed up my dick's messed up and everybody else is now too <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> you think of it like guys going along with that be like no <laughs> I, that, I mean like i get the baby thing that they don't have any control but like convincing grown-ass men that's uh <laughs> no, no 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 yeah but that that's happen. not that there's e- that's even in another story in the bible where um that yeah they're not that exact thing but like a group of of grown-ass men do get get circumcised for like a yeah that still baffles me man i don't i don't yeah that's like crazy crazy stuff but um anyway i just remember thinking well okay if you if you take that at face value or not okay if you take that face value what if they were like whoever the progenitor race was like whoever the atlanteans whoever the people who built the megalithic or or maybe it is anunnaki like alien race i don't know whatever whoever they are maybe they did make some sort of whatever the great mistake was that made their population go down so bad as they had to mix with like the 
monkeys yeah. that are running around he, the monkey ape people that we are or whatever and then created humans like that way i don't know but i just wonder to myself is um maybe we're scared of the ones that are in stasis because what if they were they're actually of that group and they i mean that really the only way you would need to be scared of them is if they had magical powers well i would think it'd be more like psychic powers right I mean, that's what well, that yeah. whole, that's what that whole, um, Samadhi, you know, or Samadhi was, is that, you know, they, they basically had, you know, telepathy, PK, uh, you know, any, any psychic power you could possibly imagine, they were the, you know, a millionth degree, right? So even in their stasis, you couldn't get near them because it was like putting out this, I don't know, force, it was like a, a vibration or like a, a thing that would get in your head and drive you mad. You couldn't even get anywhere near it because they would basically just you know ward you away from like eh, even knew where the cave was and you tried to walk your ass down there you couldn't make it like you, you physically couldn't make it mentally couldn't make it it would just force you out so i mean if these things woke up and you know there's a bunch there's a, a, a hundred guys in a room with guns and you're just like cool you guys are all gonna go to sleep right now <laughs> or you guys are all gonna your brains are gonna explode or something you know what i mean like just right right like what do you do characters. these would these would be the gods that we worshiped at that time right these would be the people that you know that would do these things yeah maybe that's how they that's how they were the gods or whatever you know um i also have have you heard of okay i heard of this like around the same time i very first saw those videos was something about how abraham lincoln when he was college age um it was with some other and i think he was a freemason as well and uh, i don't know uh but he was with whoever his club of guys were and that right. they, they found a buried pyramid with a sleeping giant in it and then um i and then i when today when i went to look that up it was it kept on attributing that to like stuff that Corey good had said but i didn't oh, think right. i heard i didn't originally hear that from Corey good so i and I don't think I've ever heard Corey Good talk about that. So I don't, I, I heard that like also 12 years ago. It's weird. You guys, if yeah. you find really good information, I didn't know this back then, but if you find something that's just is like, whoa, that's really cool. Save it on a hard drive and print it out, like, print yeah, it out do or something yeah. because it disappears. It disappears. It really <laughs> does. Like it does. I'm, I'm now at a point where I'm starting since I've been looking into weird stuff for like, you know, a long, long time. It's starting to get where I just always have this, like, it'll always be there. Like, mm. whatever. no, man. The Wayback Machine gets erased and shit, too. I mean, there's, it's bad. Like, it, stuff does disappear. I've been saying, I've been downloading videos and saving them because off of YouTube because that shit will just disappear, too. You'll see videos yeah. that you'll see and they'll just be gone, you know? Um, yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's the, the giant thing, man. I mean, that's, I don't know. I, I, it's definitely a thing. It's, it, it's too much of a thing. If you look at the historical record, just if you just look at the newspapers in the 1800s, mm -hmm. it's enough, right, to know that it was a thing. You can't say that people from every state in the U.S. Um, found giants that were mis they were all mistaken that were giants, right? And you can't say that they just all disappear. You know, like that. There's not one or two of them. Yeah, around Catalina here. Island. Apparently, there's a lot of uh, giants found in Catalina Island off of. Uh, San Diego. That place um, is just Demi Lovato was. I just I saw a clip from Demi Lovato's new show. Oh <laughs> my god! I cannot take. I I, mean, I haven't I watched it. I haven't watched. I know it. I can't take that seriously because I don't. I mean I don't have anything against her. I don't know anything about her except she's like a pop princess or something. I don't. But I mean she's. I I just saw a bunch of headlines on Twitter being like Demi Lovato says don't call aliens aliens. That's prejudice to them and it makes them feel. <laughs> like outcast or i don't know something like that i was like wah wah like uh, i can't yeah. um no, I, I don't, just fucking crazy okay but also aliens a lot of people talk about how aliens are big giants giants right. you know mm. there's like the tall whites there's mm. you know whatever i mean like the nordics are all eight foot tall or something too right to be big yeah so that's also interesting you could put that element with it mm. do you think that aliens are from other planets right now or you start because like i'm kind of going more at this point i've turned around on all that i'm thinking they're interdimensional and or they are breakaway civilization like here living now on the planet where are you well, with all that well i mean i've been really you know Giorgiani's book i read that um uh, most of it anyway you know you know you had him on and he's got that real bent you know but he have he he bases a lot of his stuff on for Pharrell, you know uh, joseph right. Pharrell. so i mean a lot of that too 
the whole breakaway thing. And there's, there's a, a bunch of different, I think there's probably many, it's many faceted. I think that probably exists. That's a facet of it. I think that the interdimensional thing makes way more sense. I think that, um, just like now, I mean, this is dumb, but I mean, just in the past couple of years, we've realized that um, mammals are phosphorescent, right? They glow under like light, like black light, you know, like scorpions do, well, right. like pl- platypus does, like humans do. Like literally humans, we go under phosphorescence under different conditions. I just saw this and I'm like, well, what the fuck? Before we thought it was like a couple fish and scorpions and, you know, some arachnids and some other things. But now it's like everything is phosphorus. We're all light. You know? Yeah. I mean, I got, I got a black light for like, cause I'm a rock hunter right over and I got a, oh, like, yeah. there's two different kinds. There's like, um, there's two UV. different kind of black lights. There's one that's like, you can't find a flashlight for it less than $200. And then there's the low, I can't remember what's like, there's low, low black light and, and high black light or whatever. And I, you know, I was looking at my nephew's skin and like uh, all his blackheads were like neon orange. And I was like, you need to, dude, come look in the mirror. Turn the light off. Look at this. Um, <laughs> yeah. Like we, we, we have elements of us that can glow. Yeah. Yeah. Weird. So it's like, it's, um, avatar. <laughs> blue, there's yeah. blue people. We glow. <laughs> there's a shit. It's connected. I mean, you know, there's, there's so much stuff going on. I, I personally think that they're they're in a frequency that we just can't get. Like when you tune in a radio and you like kind of get a channel, but you can't get it and you're like, Oh shit. You know? And then you finally get like, ah, oh, I think that they are either more psychically advanced, biologically advanced or technologically advanced that they're like, cool, we could, there we go. We're in there. And then they're just hanging out. Right. Like that's where ghosts come from or aliens yeah. or all that shit. Or, and they can come in and out through those things where we just kind of stumble upon stuff. And maybe we're on some type of ley line that's, there's crystal underneath that ley line with the structure of earth and it, it creates an amplifier to what we're doing. And, and all of a sudden yeah, it's like, Oh, that, or, I mean, or you or our, our third eyes could literally sometimes pop on and off, like without control. Like I, sometimes I, when I, the amount of paranormal experiences I've had throughout my life, I've started to wonder if like, okay, maybe I just am like a, um, an untrained and, and uncontrolled psychic who like doesn't realize that some of times my third eye is opening and I'm getting to see another dimensional aspect of what's already there. Like maybe that could literally be as simple as that and you know, whatever, but even if, you know, and it's also that whole concept of what's real, like to, you know, versus for you versus if it's, yeah. You don't see the same color red as I do, right? Like you right. Can how, would we, how would we ever know if we saw the same colors that, you know, that we're seeing? Yeah. And I think that's kind of it. And I think there's like a whole host of shit that's to play with that. You know, I think that there's, you know, and, and the biblical stuff comes into play probably as maybe more of a literal thing, um, you know, where all of the shit's going on and it's like all around us, but we're just trying to like, our technology is getting good enough now that we can see things outside of the spectrum where before, you know, like other animals can see things outside of the spectrum that we can't, you know, dogs and cats can see things and, you know, uh, and birds can see magnetic waves, you know, things like that. What were you using? Um, what, what were you using when you saw those UFOs with your buddies? Like, Oh yeah, it was like a psionics, um, sport pro. So it's a night color, night vision monocle. It's like a, you know, $500, like it's, it's color night vision. Right. And it's this big that you did you put it on your iPhone or how did, or what did you put it on? I was just literally holding it like that. It was just literally holding it and it's so it records. It's got white it's oh, Wi Fi okay. and yeah, and you, it has Wi Fi so you can send it to your phone or, you know, iPad or whatever, but it's got an SD card in it too. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's that big, you know, it's like that big and it fits in your hand and that's a lot of the stuff. That's how, um, Chris Bledsoe catches, catches all his stuff too. You can visually see it with your eyes, but I mean, you, you put that thing up there. It's like, you see maybe five stars and, and you put the yeah, yeah. thing up and it's like the whole sky is full, you know? Oh, I mean, our visual light spectrum is, is when you look at the full spectrum of from all the way from your gamma rays to your right, everything, it's like, we see like so little of <laughs> yeah. what's really going on. So, and it's interesting, it's interesting to know that you know, your senses, whether it's your hearing and your, or whatever, your senses are instruments, their instrumentation on how do you navigate your world and your reality. And we are limited by our senses. Yeah. And our senses kind of suck. Yeah. And <laughs> they deteriorate and they get, you know. Yeah. Like, my my eyes people. aren't getting any better. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know, good. like uh, I, if, if giants come, uh, I don't know if, if like an actual giant, like, 12 foot redheaded blue skinned giant like starts like coming on to tv or whatever 
I, I mean, it would be really, at this point, I feel like because of our technology, we wouldn't care or believe anything or the people would just be like, whatever. It's like some, CGI. It's, yeah, it's CGI. CGI. It's CGI or it's Andre the Giant in Halloween costume make, makeup or, Face you know. swap or whatever the shit they're doing now. Deep fakes. They're deep faking it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, I I think you're right. I mean, but then what would you, what would be the, we would just cage it and tase it and like try to, you know, I mean, that's what we do as humans too. We just scoop it up and try to like poke it. And the same thing if like if these things were in stasis in 2008 or whatever and we woke them up, I, I kind of believe we would stick them in some kind of secure location in the yeah. middle of the underground somewhere and we're just like interrogating oh, yeah. the shit out of them. They're not going to be able to get free reign of what they want. It's not like, okay, you, 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 you be your own sovereign self. Like, what, I mean, they're not going to do that. No, 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 no. I mean, like uh, the stuff I got into when I started reading the Russian thing, they even like named this guy. It was like something the magician or whatever. Like it could because they. Oh yeah, I saw whoever... some name with it, and I was like, "Did it tell you that?" Like, how it was do like you... that. The, there was that plate on its chest, I guess, and it was uh, I don't know if it's Sumerian or something like that, but whatever oh. the text was was something Sumerian, and you know, I had a crown on it. I guess it was you know the words, but it was something, and it was the tomb of whatever the magician. And they, they found another video that had like the outside of the box he was in. It was like a big concrete box that that other box that he was in, like that crystalline box that we're right. talking about, was inside of that box. So they like showed the outside of that. And that had a bunch of different um, hieroglyphs and everything on it that basically said that from what they, well, I don't know, you know, it's Russian to English to whatever language <laughs> that they disseminated from. So, who you know, who knows? But it had something to do with the, mag you know, magician or whatever like that. But So the Sumerian stuff is, is really... Is really interesting to me. I would, I, you know, I, 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 a long time ago read through a Zachariah Sitchin thing about how mm -hmm. basically Anunnaki's are like a, a race who come here to, and they used, they made it, they, the story is essentially from his, he, apparently he just translated cuneiform text, but mm -hmm. then now they say he took a lot of liberties. So I don't know what's what, you know, because we don't really have anybody else who's really gone in and done really good work with it. That is like, I don't know, but or in, at least that I've come across yet. I'm sure that's there. I just haven't really, you know, dug enough into it. But apparently, I don't remember where the Anunnaki are from, but they're Martians, essentially, or if, if they were some other kind of planet. Anyway, they come from another planet. They come here to take gold because they mm. eat gold and that's how they live. And the gold is apparently what sustains their life and they can live really long with gold. So they come here and they teach us how to are they they give us consciousness enough to be able to be sl a slave race and to that's mine so, it for them right, right to yeah. mine to mine the gold for them and then once they had their fill they bounce like that's sort sort of like what it what um it says and or apparently what he talked about yeah yeah there's a, there's that kind of thing and, and the way i remember it was it was like planet x is new right, or something new and that's Buhuru. where they come from yeah and that you know it's an elliptical orbit that only comes into our galaxy every twelve thousand years or it's in our galaxy it's in our solar system so every like twelve thousand right. years it comes back we can't see it whatever it's the second sun it's behind the sun whatever on all that and that there's a cataclysm every twelve thousand years as well and we kind of look at that the younger dryas and all this other stuff right right and the kind of the stuff that i got into was solar you know the galactic center of the universe you know the plasma universe that basically the sun has a massive flare every twelve thousand years pretty much wipes out everybody on the planet unless you're underground you're hiding then you come back up they knew it was coming and i think it triggers the flood so that the flood myth falls into that as well, right? So they created us. They're Niki and Yell. Um, one of them is the brother yep. that kind of made us, you know, so we could do it. But then at first they made us, then we couldn't mate. So we had like, no, you know, they just have to keep cloning us. And then they're like, this is bullshit. Let's just <laughs> let them be able to procreate because we've got tired of making them. So they did that and then they were pissed. Um, and then, you know, the, the they knew the, the, solar storms coming again it's going to wipe us all out they're like cool we don't want to deal with this shit anyway because there's warring factions and you know basically proxy wars between the brothers and the other families of the anunnaki's are having you know all these humans fight off and they're like screw it we're done and you know i think uh, the story was that you know i think it was aniki basically f felt bad because this is his creation so got dna from everything that he created earth you know all the plants animals whatever put that that's the arc right and the ark could have been, you know, not a boat floating around, but they could have shot that up into the, you know, as a satellite, put things in stasis to when everything calmed back down, dropped it back down, and then poof, put us all back. Ark, right. Well, yeah. and then they also, that's kind of the Prometheus legend too, right? Um, mm -hmm. Where 
um, or, 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 or at least it's similar to the Prometheus legend where like Prometheus goes and gives like the flame of knowledge to humans or whatever and against like the other gods wishes. Um, so yeah, maybe like there's, there's definitely things that, you know, these giants with powers, like whatever you want to call them, gods or not gods or whatever, gods with a little G, not the right. big G. Um, right. Yeah, I don't know. That, that would be interesting. That would be an interesting war of the worlds if, if uh, they return. Yeah. I mean, cause then, I mean, what would that do? It would just spin everything on its head, you know? But I mean, knowing humans, we're just such assholes that we would just try to fucking kill them. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <What's> the, <laughs> what is it? Boom. Uh, I don't know. It's dead now. You know? Yeah. I mean, Shoot first, ask questions later. Like that's kind of been our, like, that's what we do with UFOs. They're like, oh, I got it locked in. Let's yeah. shoot it. Shoot it. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Let's shoot it. <laughs> right. We got them. I don't know, man. That, I mean, that's, but maybe there's good reason. Maybe they are assholes. I mean, if they are like that and they're coming back to try to, you know, enslave humanity or whatever. Right. Then, or maybe yeah. they just wait till the, whatever it is that destroys earth every once in a while um, is done. And then they see the sixth race or keep coming back, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. Who knows? I mean, and then they're like, okay, cool. Let's see what new gold was, uh, was uh, pushed up. But I do think that is interesting that somebody, I can't remember where I heard this point, but there was a point about how as much gold mining as we have done as much gold thing, like, where is the gold? Like we mm -hmm. don't like gold seems to be, um, it seems to be going away. Mm. Like, you, you know, like, like, like for as just, much like piles of it anyway. Right. Right. Like, I guess there's Fort Knox or something, but they just, there, there seems to be a very um, low supply of gold on, or at least access to it. I don't know where it is or what they do with it, but. I don't know. That's where they get that monoatomic gold. I think that's. Yeah. Where, that's okay. Or they're yeah. eating it. They eat yes, the exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Everybody's eating it and it's making them live forever. Right. I, I don't know. That's Maybe. well, that's apparently what they did. And in fact, yeah. there's, I read some paper about some, um, some tomb not too far from uh het Het suits tomb or something in or her temple in egypt and they found all this white powder mm -hmm. and they didn't know what it was they didn't know what it was they've been doing some analysis on it and turns out it's basically monoatomic gold and then and and it was like like they found it in so many like tons and tons of it and it's like they were like we don't know what this white powder is and that's what it is so it's like Egypt, were Egyptians eating that? Is that was that part of the thing? But then the other part of that is too is that I think it becomes weightless. It's invisible and weightless too. At some point, what if you spin it? Or I can't remember what exactly you do, but they were theorizing that that's how all these massive things were created. I mean, if you had this amount of gold, you could you make the massive or, right. giant rocks. You know, you know yeah, it doesn't weigh anything. Throw it up there now. You know, like yeah, and. Um, I don't know. John Warner had some good theories on, um, you know, they were using toy toy um, motors, you know, with uh, monoatomic gold as the mercury and monoatomic gold as the spin to create craft like UFOs, like you know, man-made UFOs that would basically be weightless. Then that's cool. Yeah, that would be rad, right? I don't know if that's real. Yeah, but yeah, giants. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Dude, they, I mean, they got to be it, right? I don't think they're going to be like, but then, you know, all the, all the grays are just little things. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, there there is there is giants found in Peru, too. Like, in those Paracas skulls are supposedly, they, uh, I don't know if you've seen Brian Forrester's latest thing on the DNA from those, but they were apparently the big no. giant, I'll, I'll send you a link or I'll, I'll yeah. Yeah. Um, it's really cool, but basically they are linked with um, some, I guess, like European, uh, like like they have some European DNA in, in those Paracas skulls. Wow. So, or maybe it was Russian DNA or something. Anyway, it's not. It's there. There was there was definitely intercoastal travel, like yeah. way back when. I mean, that's like kind of hard to deny that even at this point. At this point, but right. um, it, the but they were a giant. The, there was the giant skull with the elongated skull things. Those were not just like, well, they weren't just giant skulls, like walking around on a five foot four body going like, Hey, what up? <laughs> like hitting doorways. Bobblehead. No. <laughs> yeah. No, like the, yeah, they were, they were giants too. I didn't realize that their the rest of their skeletons were massive. 
Um, yeah, like I, I think they're at least six foot. Some of them are, are more like seven or eight feet, but like, I mean, they're not like the 22 foot things right, we're, right. we're talking about, but yeah, like they're pretty big. And that's, that's the thing is like, I don't, I haven't seen a full skeleton of one. I only, mm -hmm. I only ever hear about or see just the, the skulls. Head, the right. skulls. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Well, I mean, if you think about it, when we were talking about earlier, if, if they made a mistake and they, they only had one female and the race wasn't existing. They had to start breeding with us, right? Mm -hmm. To create us. There would definitely be some residual DNA aspect to that, right? There would have to be something that would be carried down, right? And then maybe those were the men of rena renown, men and women of renown, like, uh, you know. Um, the kings or like they had, they had. Spartans. Or, or, right, or, yeah, right. Yeah, right. Or, you know, some of the warrior races or, you know, maybe they're, they were, you know, bigger. Um, yeah, they were, like, they were like the Herculesers, the Hercules or the, what do you call them when they're half, half God, half. Or, it, Exactly. Yeah. So maybe, you know, like Maui <laughs> from Moana, you know, or something, you know, right. It's just like, you know, you're, you're a half, you're a half breed, but you're still massive. You're not like a five foot tall human, you're an eight foot tall human, right? Um, you still have some, maybe the psychic powers probably, you know, was probably genetic, carried that down as well. So you're kind of a giant, you're psychic, but you're a human. Um, and then if you think about that, you know, maybe you're 10 foot tall and then after 5,000, 6,000 years, and you know, we got seven foot, six foot tall people, right? Seven foot tall people now. I mean, yeah. well, I wonder about um, uh, Antarctica and about how, um, uh, oh, but actually, what you just, about what you just said with that is um, even that the Consuela Atlantean told, oh, yeah. told um, Sarata guy that the sixth bait, the sixth race is being made right now and that they will be no bigger than three feet tall. Because they they have discovered then that there will be a total of seven, seven races in the experiment and that we are the fifth and that our time is coming to an end. The sixth race is being made ready to be introduced. It's half the size of us. And they said that they're finding that uh, whoever they are, <laughs> are finding that uh, we are less invasive the smaller we are. Hmm. Can't fight back. <laughs> the smaller yeah. we get, right? Well, yeah. It, yeah, yeah. Well, I guess you require like less resources, maybe. I don't know. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, I guess so. But that, I mean, that's awesome. I, I could see yes. it happening. I mean, we could just be a damn uh, ant farm. But I actually, I think people are, I mean, like if you go look at it, museums from the 1800s, those people had like super small feet and stuff. And everybody was like, you know, you're like, whoa. The average height was like, what, five foot? six or something or two or three or something yeah like we're yeah. definitely bigger than we were so and i don't know if that's the our milk or whatever we're eating or whatever but <laughs> yeah no really and everybody lived to be like 40 <laughs> right like, you're 40 you're dead Doug. and he just died you know peace him out i was like he's 60 oh my god you know now he's, it's like, so old. <laughs> he's so old he's like dead i think the median age was like 42 for men or something like that right yeah it was like yeah. my age. I'm just dead, you know. I got. I don't got time, much time left, Nikki. I'm not gonna make it much longer. All right. Well, and that, and that, I'm 39. I'll be 40 next year, so I'll Join be gone. Me. But that's we'll it. Be. Yeah. Um. But yeah, and ab about uh, what I think is a little bit interesting about the um, Antarctica stuff is that uh, I don't know if you did you ever watch um, Linda Moulton Howe's thing on, yeah. on on Antarctica and about how that place that the whistleblowers or whatever were talking about like was super um giant like super super massive mm -hmm. open cavern like open like as if it was a giant warehouse of like you know whatever like walmart or something except it didn't have any pillars or anything and it was as far as you could see like way bigger than anything we we have um right yeah that's kind of crazy it would make sense. It would make sense if you found some of those stasis beings there too. It would make sense why people, you know, like Buzz Aldrin and all those people came and like, you know, see that like, hey look we found a bunch of frozen giants down here that are just hanging out. We woke up a couple of them, but they kind of got shitty with them. So, you know right. I mean? And like, then, and then like what Buzz Aldrin had that weird tweet that was taken yeah. down. What was it? Something like I've seen the face of evil and yeah, yeah, and yeah, it's, yeah. it's down here. Or I, I don't know something about. Yeah. 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 And it's like, they got Prince Harry out there. They got everybody out there, you know, like yeah, John Kerry flew out there. Like John Kerry. Like, yeah. Did Obama go or something or some, oh. uh, I don't, I don't know, know if Obama went or not, or if it was somebody else during uh, that time. But yeah, like, like, that was that. I, I don't know why I think there's a connection. 
but I think there's a connection. I think there's always connections with everything, but yeah. There is. It is. But yeah, you're right, Anna, because I mean, that could be a perfect place. Think about it. I mean, even if if you go to, back to your theory of the Atlanteans or whatever, or, or the, the the Mew or Mirror or whatever, right. that could be that could be their, their break, blade breakaway area. Their right. breakaway is hanging out down there, you know, and then we stumbled upon it or, you know, maybe part of it. And, um, you know, or these things are waking up and telling us where to go look. Yeah. Oh, and there's also, um, there are, there was something in Russia where they found, I don't remember where I got this from, but I remember hearing about how Russians found giants at the bottom of the, of some, um, Serbian lakes and oh, yeah. And I was, and I remember thinking like, what does that mean? They found like giant bones or it just, but it, I remember it was talking about, they found giants at the bottom of Serbian lakes. Wow. It's like, cool. Yeah. That's yeah I don't know. I just feel like I get too many weird little hits of these, of these giant stories that aren't related to each other from sources that aren't related to each other that you kind of have to start going, what's going on? Mm-hmm. And then we go back to the fable thing. I mean, you wouldn't have fables about Jack and the Beanstalk. I mean, the like I said, the Bible. You look at the Bible, it's like David and Goliath, and it literally states there was giants on the earth at that time. Why yeah. would you, if you're doing the King James Bible and you're th- ripping shit out, like, why would you leave that part? <laughs> or, or, or all old maps would be like, here be giants. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, and they're like, oh, yeah. that just means we've not explored that. Don't go there yet. But it's like, yeah. or it could mean there's giants. Like, I don't Giants know. there. And the, don't go there. Yeah, there's don't giants. go over there. Yeah, no doubt. I, it could be. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't think we're going to we even know. I mean. No, I know. And I, that's the, the, the sad thing about everything is, it's like, it's like um, that dude who just died. He was a big researcher. Um, his name is Chuck. And he is from like, he has, his YouTube name is like the worst YouTube name ever because it's a bunch oh. of numbers. But it's like CF. Mm, yeah mm-hmm. seven five six eight or something yeah, like that. yeah i saw somebody like i saw it was like on twitter day it was like rest in peace yeah he, yeah he yeah he had yeah. a heart attack recently or just yesterday or the fifth or whatever and and he was actually really cool but he he said um and i and somebody like put this up on one but one of his videos he says ancient history is a suggestion box so if you don't get off your high horse because if you think you've figured out the mystery of everything then you're no better than the people who are 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 holding the gates up he's like because like we are all able to put suggestions into this box because we really don't know what happened and i really liked the the, like when i was listening i was like actually that is i do think that is true because there we we do get in this um mentality where we kind of feel like um we know we, everything. Yeah. yeah, we can be certain of things that we really can't be certain of. And yeah. that's that's uh, also, you know, even just look at how things are written about in our own day and time. Like imagine, <laughs> imagine what, <laughs> if you give that a couple hundred years, how does that age? Like, how do, you know, how does that come, come over? So like do a thousand years, do 10,000 years. Like we don't know yeah. what hell went on with anybody. No, not at all. No, and that's cool. And, and I, the um, I mean, it can be written all the time. Well, look at the giant head. I forgot about that. They found that 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 um, the dragon man. Did you, did you hear about that? Oh yeah, China? the guy in China. Yeah, it was a massive head. They're like, what is this? And it was like some Chinese guy a hundred years ago want, hit it in a well because the Japanese were invading and they didn't want him to get a hold of it. And like he mm-hmm. told his son on his deathbed, and now they have this giant fucking human skull that's like the dragon man and they're like this completely know, writes history you books. know what i have read about that people are like oh this is just a deformed person like that's the latest like scientific study i saw like i saw one the other day about that and i was like oh okay like <sighs> that stuff just really gets me i mean maybe it was a deformed person <laughs> but i yeah i don't know no, I mean, they, they ran stuff and it was like, he was like 50 some years old or whatever, you know, right, they do right, all that right. stuff. Was, and it's like, he had a fully formed mouth and like, you know what I mean? Like it wasn't, it wasn't some mongoloid running around. I mean, you wouldn't live that long and you know, that day and age. Yeah, true. Like 50 yeah. apparently was, was, he was an, he was a Gandalf. Yeah, for sure. I mean, but then it completely like it rewrites the history of, you know, uh, the, the, Oh shit! I can't. Remember. <laughs> what am I going for? The missing link, you know. I mean, not even oh, missing link, right, but what's right. what's the you know? You always see the line of like the monkey going up and evolving. Oh, around. that I I like I, I always get um some heat for that, but I'm I mean especially like all the stuff we're finding with the Denisovans and the Neanderthals and like they bury their dead, they made arts and crafts, they have weapons, they're like 
like we uh, we have this whole story of like oh once upon a time we were plankton and then we became rats and then we became dinosaurs and then only the squirrels survived and then we became monkeys to this you know and you're just kind of going like okay maybe but at the same time uh i think the have you been watching this la palma uh okay la palma is a volcano that's bit, is erupting in the canary islands oh, right now. oh okay yeah, yeah yeah and i watched last night like it's a little bit sadistic or something. I just really like to watch. Is it like a live feed? Or you're There's a live feed, and it's it's like it's like basically having one of those apps with the fireplace roaring or something. Oh. <laughs> so so I just I like I, I'll ha I'll put it on line in while the background like, I'm reading and stuff like just 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 to kind of just some ambiance, right? Yeah. So, and and it has that like rush like that 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 volume. It's it's kind of, I like it. It's, yeah. I know I shouldn't like it because it's like destroying this island, but I like it. Well, people anyway, are out of the way. It's not like there's going to be people in eminent danger. No, I, I know. Mean, yeah, know. exactly. I'm not like, hey, burn it all down. No, but <laughs> at the same time, I really like the, the sound of that yeah. that volcano. It's cool. So anyway, uh, I was watching another feed where they were showing it take a house. And it was this like beautiful, giant, big mansion. You know, like one of those Spanish ma mansions with the saltillo tiles on the top mm. or whatever. And... It just, yeah, it just like burns it up. It takes it and then it like literally becomes like this black rock and then it just moves over it. And it's just nothing. It's just part of the lava now because that flow is just like coming down. And it really, it makes me go back into when you watch pictures of landslides, mudslides, oh, right. tsunamis. Like we could, our civilization could be gone in a flash. Mm -hmm. We really could be. Like mm -hmm. we, we, I, I, we all have this like, idea that we're the most advanced we've ever been mm -hmm. and that that but i'm telling you i don't think that's true and mm -hmm. i don't think that that i mean like our our continents the other thing they have like pangea right they always show you like oh we were oh, all yeah, one, we're one thing. This. yeah that's it's, bullshit that's cool except for that yeah there are continents that have come and gone that are mm -hmm. like sunk like zealandia or, or doggerland or like whatever like there's like our the 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 coastlines that you see I mean, I go dig up fossils in Texas all the time, like that are like sea fossils. This was underwater for a long ass time. Like mm -hmm. this is, we, we are not on a stationary um, thing. So it's okay if there was giants, the guys, it's not going to, it's not going to rock our world. It's okay. Yeah. And you know, that's, I think maybe that's the thing that was like what you said, maybe we find these giants and we're like, well, shit, we're not the top of the food chain. Like these things are way more advanced than us. They got six fingers or, you know what I mean? They're right. 10 foot tall or 12 foot tall. Their brains are, I mean, the skulls are gotta be, you know, three times the size of our skulls. So their brains gotta be way bigger than ours. Well, it could be that, or before the younger Dryas, like you had woolly mammoths, you had sloths that were twenty feet tall. You had oh, so everything was huge. Yeah, then, everything. Yeah. You had plant plant fossils that are like you know just you know ginormous palm leaves and things that don't that, that don't grow that big anymore. So maybe Good point. We were everything dealing, was just bigger. Everything was bigger. Maybe the human itself was bigger, and it was what you were what what the air was. Maybe it was the maybe it was the magnetic strength of the of the Earth's core or whatever i don't know there was yeah. something about the living conditions that allowed for things to get humongous which don't exist anymore like the saber tooth tiger is this giant car thing right? it's the size yeah. of an suv you know it's like and that's not that long ago Ten thousand year or 12 whatever the, the young address eleven thousand six hundred 11,600 years ago and like whatever between twelve thousand and ten thousand years ago there was some stuff that went on okay yeah. that's really not that long ago no not things not at all. So we, we, do you think we should just go hijack um, Wakanda? <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, that's uh, it's interesting because you were talking about um, the Samadhi thing and like oh, how yeah. you can't even get into those places if you wanted because whatever. Well, yeah. when I was actually already in Colombia, it's like, oh, the instructions to get into Manoa are like you couldn't you can't have sex for six months before you go there. You have to breathe a certain way. You have to eat only life force you have to eat like some sort of like i can't remember it was like just fruit or something you can't even have vegetables it was like there was all these things about how you have to bring your life force prana up to a certain level before you could go through the port portal which is why the monk was allowed in the portal but nobody else and um so we, we were there we we're like well, i didn't know any of this before we got here um like yeah so we're not getting in okay <laughs> like 
Hi. <laughs> we're fucked. <laughs> yeah, we fucked. Yeah, we were. Yeah, but I, th I, I still think that there's like um, uh, riffs or like, you know, low spots or, or whatever, right? Like like the Rip Van Winkle story. What if that dude just slipped into some time warp? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like a, some something happened where he just like, whoops, uh, you know. And there's always, there's really crazy stories about that too that happen modern day. I think I... I can't remember where I was watching it or what, but there was a guy that was shopping with his wife in England or somewhere. And he was like, she went to a shop and he's like, oh, okay. And he went over there. He's like, all right, well, I'm going to go outside. I don't want to be in here. Walked outside and it was like 1800s England. And he was like, mm. what the fuck? You know, and he's walking around and it's just like horse and buggies and all the shit's going on. And he's just like, whatever. And then, you know, he finally comes around a corner or something and like, psh, comes, it comes back to like modern day. And he was like, what the fuck <laughs> you know like maybe that happens maybe there's these like little magnetic anomalies or something where you know the veil slips and it's like ooh, you know ah, shit yeah no I, 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 I do. and i mean there are places that um you know like mount shasta is one where a bunch of people have um weird things that they call it a portal they call mm -hmm. like some people claim that parts of sedona are a portal mm -hmm. some it, like there's that um uh puma punku the mm -hmm. Uh, Amaru, whatever, uh, something of the sun, gate of the sun, or whatever, where people, if you apparently, this like guy, like Jerry Walsh. Oh, yeah, uh, put, just, put your head on there and you get a mumble. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. sing a certain hum or whatever, and then like you basically can be teleported into a, a thing or whatever. But yeah, the time slips are, are definitely interesting because like I, I had a, I had one, one time. Mm hmm when I was in Chaco Canyon and I was walking to the furthest, um, uh, it's like a, I think it's like a seven or nine mile hike to get out there. And it's, it's no, no most people don't do it. Cause you have to sign a little paper in case you go missing. And oh, so it's looking for you. It's yeah. Fire, and, it's, and it's, and it's, and it's, it'll, it's like an all day thing to go. Mm -hmm. And most people aren't there, but just for like one day. Right. So mm -hmm. I, I went and spent a week there. Um, with my brother like a couple years ago and we decided to go do this for this pueblo and um we <laughs> yeah we got chased by a giant bobcat that wasn't fun Ooh. but um yeah that that and it was huge i thought it was a mountain lion my brother's like it's just a bobcat and i'm like oh, well, <laughs> that thing could take me out i just gotta say that <laughs> um but anyway uh so like we were in the prairie, like walking towards from one Canyon to the next Canyon. And I, and my brother was going too fast and was pissing me off. And I was like, <sighs> I was having to catch my breath. And I like turned back and I look at the Pueblo Benito, like where the, the big, the main stuff was. And all of a sudden, like when I looked back, there was tall green grass everywhere and the buildings had smoke coming out of them and they were full. They were much taller than they were. And there was like, a couple of buffalo and there was like a river that was like had all kinds of water in it, in it that's all dried up now and I was like I was like looking at it and I was I was um kind of like just in awe and it was only like maybe five seconds I was looking at this and then my brother says hurry up or you know something like that and I like I turn around to like look at him as he's screaming to me and then I'm like oh and I turn back around and it's just how it is it's normal and I was like what the hell was that right you know, Could happen. and then not too far from like about t 10 minutes up the lane is when a bobcat was like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you saw it. We can't let you live. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The bobcat was like, you're in my territory. So, was like, oh. um, so, so yeah, I don't know if that was a time slip or if that was like my third eye just popped open one second or to, I don't know, but they, I think there are time slips. Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. Maybe giants can Boom. yeah may and maybe they were and who knows? maybe they aren't in stasis maybe they're just dead and that was just you know yeah I mean, but if they're awake and um consciously manipulating everything too subconsciously what if they're so psychically strong that all the weird shit that's been going on for the past few years is because these things have been waking up yeah maybe because they're currently waking up and they're like that's a theory um mm -hmm. Can't say theories like that, John, or we'll just be, we'll just be taken off of YouTube. Canceled. We <laughs> canceled. <in> the canceled culture. <laughs> be just canceled. Cool. Screw it. Well, I think this was fun, man. Thank you. Yeah, it was fun. It. Yeah, I had a good time. It's good giant. Yeah. yeah, if you guys yeah. know anything else about giants, I'd like to know more. So send me stuff yes. on it. 
Yeah, send us stuff and we'll maybe do Giants too, where we could actually do a little bit deeper research and, you know, right. pop and stories like, but, and stuff. And I will try to put some of the links to the things I've talked about and or um, try to insert that video in here to kind of show people like what we were talking about. Yeah, that's a good idea. We'll stick it in there because it's just so weird, you know. And if somebody's going to even, and you know, just before we end, but like if somebody's going to go through the trouble and fake all that, like for what? <laughs> why? Yeah. I mean, exactly. if it's if it is a fake and we're just screwing around, why? I mean, what's what's? The I really want to see that? the one where they like touch his. his I'll send skin. it to you. Yeah, yeah. it was great. They're just grabbing his boob. That's his funny thing. They're just grabbing his pack. It was like grabbing the pectoral <laughs> muscle, and it was like you know Russian translated. And I'm like, why is the guy just feeling him up? <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. like, could it? Could you grab his There's arm other or something? Parts of him to touch too. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, grab his arm. I mean, he's poking his belly button, and the other he's just grabbing his boob. And I'm like, well, okay, like he just. Yeah, hey, hey, that'd or, probably wake you up. Yeah. Just, <laughs> Hey, hey, good morning. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, but um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, maybe, maybe he's already awake and running around. Yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> how you would get something to 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 like? I mean, we if they if they were able to be in stasis for however long they've been in stasis, that we have no idea how to wake them up. Mm -mm. Like I, from what I read, and that was just what I read, was that somehow cosmically it aligned. You know, whatever. Mm. That was that would make sense if it was on some kind of timer. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, when, once we get the universe spins, you know, the solar system spins as part of the universe lines up with whatever else, the galactic center or something, you know, and it's like, it's like, hey, wake up. You got stuff to do. And then, then you're like, oh, like you see us little rats, like <laughs> chaining you up and you're like, oh, that shit. <laughs> From that guy's perspective, you're like, man, well, you know, I, to sleep. I have heard about how we're coming into a solar minimum and that we might actually be going into an ice age versus yeah. anything else. So I don't know. And like, that's apparently started or people, there's some stuff that says that started in 2020. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. So Yay. Hey, more, more to come. Yeah. Tune back in next week, folks. We're going to talk about everybody freezes to death. <laughs> <laughs> tragedy on top of the tragedy. Yeah. Oh, dude. Thanks, Nikki. You right. Yeah. Thanks, John. It was really cool.